Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey everyone, welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. So glad you're joining us here on the show today. Before we get to our conversation with Joe Gibbs, the Pro Football Hall of Fame coach and the NASCAR Hall of Famer, I want to tell you about Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. They got over 66 years of experience and they work through the local church, 7,000 plus church partners in 25 countries delivering God's love and care to children in need, one child at a time. They do it all in Jesus' name. They do it right. It's why we love them. It's why we are so grateful to have them as partners with us at Sports Spectrum. And that's why I want to encourage you to join the fight to end poverty, releasing children from poverty. Here's how you can do it. It's $38 a month, tax deductible. You go to the website, compassion.com slash sports spectrum, compassion.com slash sports spectrum pray about it and consider sponsoring a child today really excited to welcome joe gibbs pro football hall of famer nascar hall of famer here on sports spectrum you know joe gibbs he's the owner of joe gibbs racing in the nascar circuit he's a three-time super bowl champion with three different quarterbacks the only coach ever to win three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. He's also a member of the NFL's 100th anniversary all-time team, named at the end of 2019 into 2020. And he's a five-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, a two-time NASCAR Xfinity Series champion, Joe Gibbs. And he had two stints with the Redskins, if you remember coaching, from 1981 to 1992, and then 2004 to 2007 Named to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, class of 1996, and inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, class of 2020. You're going to love this conversation with Joe Gibbs. And one of my favorite stories about Coach Gibbs is a time back in 2009 or 2010 when I spent a day with Joe at ESPN. When I was working there as a talent producer, Joe Gibbs came in and he was doing the ESPN car wash and I was walking him around. And at the very end of the day, after we had spent a nice day talking about faith, talking about football, talking about his new book at that time, Game Plan for Life, Coach Joe Gibbs found out that I was a Dallas Cowboys fan. And I've been a Cowboys fan since 1979, so I'm not a bandwagoner. And I've been rooting for that team for a long time. And when Coach found out that I was a Cowboys fan, he simply looked at me, he smiled, and he said, I need to pray for you, Jason. And it was one of the funnier moments I've ever had working at ESPN. And the reason I'm telling you that story is because at the very beginning of this taping, you hear Coach Gibbs mention the fact that I'm a Cowboys fan. It was actually not even supposed to be in the interview, but I left it in because it just was, it was too funny when he jumped on the phone and said hello to me. So take a listen to our conversation with the Pro Football Hall of Famer, the NASCAR Hall of Famer, Joe Gibbs, joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Not sure I'm gonna talk to Jason. He's a, he's a cowboy fan. <laughs> Hi, Coach. How are you? <laughs> what you doing, man? <laughs> I'm all right. I don't know if you remember. We met ten years ago at ESPN, and I remember you said, "I have to pray for you, Jason, because you're a Cowboys fan." And it was right there at ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll never forget I that. I, I think I do. They reminded me of it, but I think I do remember that. That's yeah, funny. Good. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on there. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's hit start here and we'll get going. Joining us here on Sports Spectrum, it's an honor and a privilege to talk to one of the greats, both in the racing world and in the pro football world. He is Joe Gibbs, Pro Football Hall of Famer and NASCAR Hall of Famer. Coach Gibbs, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Well, it's a thrill for me to be on, Jason. Hey, I appreciate it. Um, I've had a great two weeks here. And so I realize how fortunate I am to be a part of two Hall of Fames and it's the people around me in both of those that have kind of pushed me up front. And so I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show. 
Yeah, you've done you know so many great things in your career and impacted so many different lives. But what did that accomplishment mean, being named to the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Already a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but to, to have that accomplishment come your way, what did that mean to you? Well, it, uh, you know, I respect so many people that have gone before me um, in the NFL Hall of Fame for sure. And f- to be there this past weekend for those with those 100 guys that have been honored to be in the top 100 honored in the NFL. So it's a thrill for me and to see those guys and get a chance to be around people that you look up to and then to come over to nascar and realize all the people that went before you that built this sport and then to be a part of it is certainly a thrill for me so in both cases it's a similar excitement for me uh i love it it's a thrill to be a part of it in both these worlds and i realize how fortunate i am you are fortunate and one thing that you're fortunate is that you have that strong faith foundation this is the intersection of sports and faith and i love how outspoken you are and how outspoken you've always been about your faith in Jesus. Can you share a little bit about where that took shape for you? You know, many people see you nowadays and they know that you're a strong believer, but where did that really take shape for you, coach? I think, uh, you know, I always start by telling people the first big decision I ever had to be made, I ever had to make in life. I was in the third grade, nine years old, Inca, North Carolina. And the teacher there was telling me that uh, that that I that two amoeba happened to hit two billion years ago, and I was the result. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't real sharp, but that didn't sound good to me. She told me I, I was really what she was saying. I was an accident, and thank goodness my mother, my grandmother had me in church, and that pastor was telling me something totally different. In church. And that was that there was an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God that looked down, knit me together in my mother's womb, made me special and different, and wanted to have a personal relationship with me. And so I got to tell you, it was an easy decision for me. I went forward in church, and I asked you know, Christ to come in my life, forgive me of my sins and be my Lord and personal savior. Um, and that's really where it started with me. I drifted away when I was in college, uh, rededicated my life, uh, at 32 years old, I had Pat come into my life. She took off and went forward in church and gave her life to Christ and was a witness to me. And so it was a growth thing from then on, had two boys, I got eight grandkids right now. It's a thrill for me, and I've been in two great sports. I just realized how fortunate I am. Most people in life never get to have one experience like that. I've had a chance to have two, and so I'm really fortunate. Um, My focus right now is 79 in life is to finish strong and to be as good a witness as I can and to really take care of my grandkids and the ministry I've been blessed with. Well, and, and yes, your ministry is, is an absolute blessing to so many. When you came into the NFL and you said you rededicated your life, so this this sort of re, rebirthed faith in you, you have to kind of live that out and, and still be a coach. What, would that, what was that like? Because a lot of people, I think, struggle with being a believer, but in their place of work, in their place of influence, trying to live that faith out. Because, you know, you might get you know, people that uh, come back at you or don't agree or don't have the same faith. How are you able to navigate through that as a coach during your time in the, in the, in the NFL as a believer? Well, I encourage people because, you know, a lot of people would say, Hey, you can't coach a fo- NFL football team and not use foul language. And so I just try and encourage people and say, that's not the case. And people really respect you. Um, you know, um, I think both the worlds I've been in, um, I think you can live your life and I encourage people to do that and take a godly stand on things. And I think people really respect that. I know that's been the case in my life and I just appreciate, um, all those players and front office 
and everybody that was around me uh, in the NFL. And then when I came over here to NASCAR to be able to do the same thing with so many great people, I think taking a stand uh, for Christ and, you know, trying to live your life. I never asked anybody in interviews about hiring them or anything else, what their spiritual view was. I just tried to look at, try and find the right people and then realize that they're going to look at you. And I think if you just live your life, taking a godly stand on things, I think people respect that. So I encourage people, take that stand and live it. I think you're going to find that God will bless it. We all go through those dark and difficult times. Coach Joe Gibbs joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Can you encourage someone listening that is going through a difficult time or a dark time on how to stay close to the Lord, how to stay connected to that vine, as John 15 talks about? Because I know for you, you've been through some difficult seasons of life. How has that faith you know, helped you kind of get through those difficult seasons and maybe encourage someone listening that's going through a difficult time of their own? Well, I think for me, the darkest time of my life has been over the last year and a half where J.D., my son, went to be with the Lord last January 11th. And um, for me, um, during that time, I don't know how you would go through that or, or kind of go through something like that without knowing that God is there. I know where J.D. is. I may get a chance to go and be with him and to be quite truthful. If God came and got me today, I would be excited about that. Yeah. Uh, and so when life gives us twists and turns occupationally, I've been in football. You can't count on things. The ball can bounce all the different kinds of ways people can be hurt. And then to come over to NASCAR and experience all the things that can happen to you over here. I think it's, I would just say to people, um, uh, I think the greatest thing that I've done is to have God there. And when it, when life takes those twists and turns, I, I can count on him. And I know that he's there and is always going to be there. And I know eventually I'm going to be with him. And I know today he's got J.D. there and got my mother and father and others that I love. And I'm going to be excited when my time here on earth is up and I go to be with him. Joe Gibbs is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. I love that because, you know, we don't talk about death. It's kind of morbid in a lot of ways from a worldly perspective. And then you see a situation like what happened with Kobe Bryant recently, and it really gets a lot of people talking about eternity, you know, how life is short, and just the idea that tomorrow isn't promised. Have you been able to have conversations like that, not just recently, maybe since Kobe passed, but just in general you know, going through what you went through with your son and even thinking back to the Sean Taylor uh, situation when he passed and you were coaching him back in 2007, just being able to have these conversations of having an urgency within the faith. I think uh, you make a good point there and you mentioned Sean Taylor. You know, um, there's no guarantees here on earth. Uh, What happens to Kobe Bryant, young guy, um, Sean Taylor, uh, I remember that phone call that morning where Dan Snyder told me, said, hey, Sean has been shot 24 years old mm-hmm. and got up in the middle of the night, went down to defend his family against the break in and lost his life. And so for a lot of us here on Earth, we kind of count things and we take a look and we say, well, I got confidence. I'm going to live to be 80 or whatever it is. Um There's no guarantees. And so my encouragement to everyone to make sure that you have um, made the decision, okay, are you an accident or did somebody make you? That's the real key. Yeah. And I try and witness to everybody and say, look, I know I'm no accident. I know somebody loved me and made me. And when you look around at this world, the way it's put together, that can't be an accident. When we have the ability to love each other like we do and have the feelings we have for each other, that can't be an accident. When I watch people's lives, okay, the way all of a sudden a Don Bro that I coached with at Florida State was kind of a wild man, 
Two years later, I see him at Arkansas. His life's totally changed. He's given his life to Christ. What God's done in other people's lives, that can't be an accident. And then I share with people and give my witness to what he's done in my life. Uh, He put people into my life and uh, the way he's been there for me. Uh, So it's my life. It's what I've seen him do in others' lives. It's what I've seen him do in this world and the way he has created it. And then, of course, it's God's word and the way I've been able to study his word and see what he's um, reached out to me uh, through his word and shared with me the things it takes to live God's life. So those four things for me have been um, what witnesses to me God's there, loves me, and made me. And so at some point, I'm going to be back with him. And I'm kind of excited about that, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I'm excited too, to be honest with you, Coach. And and someday that's going to be uh, a rejoicing when we all get to heaven for those who have who have placed their faith and trust in the Lord. Last question here, Coach. This has been great. Thank you so much for being generous with, with your time. We ask this question to all of our guests here on Sports Spectrum. What are you learning from the Lord today? I know you've mentioned the last couple of years have been a challenging season for you, but the Lord kind of teaches us something new every day, I think. Today, as we talk, Joe Gibbs, what is what is God teaching you? I think for me, it has been a, a tough year for me. And so I think um, I've been trying to really study about suffering And what we see in Romans 8, uh, to me, 16 and 17 and 18 is so important. What it says there is that we're heirs of Christ. Okay, what did Christ get on his walk here on earth? He got suffering and he got glory. So if we're heirs of Christ, our walk here on earth, we're going to get suffering and then we're going to get glory. Hmm. at some point. And so that's been kind of the big thing in my life is I looked at JD's life and um, I asked the questions, why? That's really kind of jumped out at me. Uh, And so that's kind of the chapter I've claimed in my life. And so it's a daily walk and uh, I've been uh, blessed to have JD as my son and his, his dream was to have young life in inner city where they couldn't afford it. Yeah. And we're trying to make that happen through his life and ministry. And so his website, jdgibbslegacy.com, I hope everybody goes there. We had a service where JD's sons read from his daily log and the impact that he's had. We've had over 3 million people go to that website. I just encourage people to go there, Mm. and I hope they'll go there. Absolutely. JDGibbsLegacy.com is the website again. Coach Joe Gibbs, you've been so awesome uh, in your time and certainly encouraging so many people in their walks with the Lord. Thanks so much for being here on Sports Spectrum, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Okay, thank you, and thank you for having me. What an honor and a privilege that was for me to talk to the legend himself, Joe Gibbs, Pro Football Hall of Fame coach, NASCAR Hall of Famer, just getting inducted here in 2020 into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the owner of Joe Gibbs Racing, three-time Super Bowl champion, five-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. The accolades go on and on, and that's a tribute to what he's been able to accomplish on the field, you know, on the on the racetrack, but... Truly, it's about what Joe Gibbs' legacy is away from the field, away from the racetrack, because this guy loves Jesus, and he's impacting more lives for the kingdom than maybe any of us will ever know. And so I'm grateful for Joe Gibbs and his witness for Jesus more than his accomplishments as a pro football Hall of Famer coach or a NASCAR Hall of Famer. I'm talking about Joe Gibbs, the follower of Jesus, and that's pretty cool to think about. Many thanks to Coach Gibbs. And again, that website he mentioned about his son, J.D., is jdgibbslegacy.com. jdgibbslegacy.com. Check out the website and certainly check out Joe's book, Game Plan for Life, and his ministry. Still doing great work all across the country. 
Thanks to Joe Gibbs. Thanks to you for listening. We really do appreciate you. We also thank our partners, Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. They work to release children from poverty in Jesus' name, founded in 1952. They partner with more than 7,000 churches in 25 countries, serving over 2 million babies, children, and young adults. You can get involved by going to the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, $38 a month, tax deductible, releasing a child from poverty. Go to Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum and pray about sponsoring a child today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Sports Spectrum. You can reach us on our website, SportsSpectrum.com. That's where all of our content can be found. You can email me, Jason at SportsSpectrum.com with any comments or thoughts or maybe even some guest ideas of people we should have on the podcast. And then you can hit our social media pages up at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search Sports Spectrum. Give us a follow. Tag us if you post this podcast, and we'll be certain to retweet it, share it, like it, all those good things. But find us there on our social media pages on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.